Hi, welcome to Art Bites with the Mary Anna Kistler Beach Museum of Art. My name is Georgia Allgaier. Um, I will be your host today and I am a gallery teacher. Um, I am bringing you this print by Stanley William Hayter called Night Moth and it was created in 1947. Um, this artist was a viewer request and we just so happened to have a few of his prints in our collection. Um, so I'm excited to share with you today. All right, Stanley William Hayter was born in London in uh, December 1901, um, and he studied geology and chemistry, which ended up leading him into a job for an oil company in the Middle East as a scientific researcher. Um, he, in his free time, would paint and draw and play tennis. Um, a lot of his art was actually portraits of, were portraits of his colleagues, which he ended up exhibiting um, in the future when he returned from um, overseas. And he went to Paris in the 1920s um, and enrolled in a private art school to become a full-time artist. And he and friends would explore and go visit other artists at workshops and at their studios. And one of these artists that he visited was named Joseph Hecht. And at this, with this artist, he was exposed to engraving and he really enjoyed engraving. And this was not something taught at the art school curriculum. Um, now, Hayter really felt like engraving was a good approach that matched his own art approaches. Um, Stanley William Hayter established a printmaking workshop called Atelier 17 um, in Paris, France in the early 30s, um, 1930s. And this essentially was just an art workshop for artists to go and exper experiment and create prints. Um, and some pretty notable artists would frequent this establishment, um, including Picasso and Miro. And this studio moved around between the 30s and the 50s. Um, Hayter ended up in New York City, brought the workshop with him to New York City, um, moved back to Europe, moved back to Paris, um, reestablished it there later on. Um, but kind of in this transitional time where it was just kind of moving around with him, um, there were exhibitions um, of artists who were associated with the workshop. And really the big picture that I, the big takeaway about Atelier 17 is that it um, helped in shaping the early abstract expressionists and that um, early abstract expressionist uh, movement and very influential in the graphic arts side of the world in that time. Um, a few art bites back, I researched a man, an artist named Krishna Reddy, and these two men have some overlap in that they both were at Atelier 17 together. Krishna had had joined and gone there, and they created together this type of printmaking called viscosity printing. And again, I go into more detail in that presentation, or you can look it up, um, but the quick and dirty of it is that artists were able to create a full colored print on one single plate, one time through the printing press. Um, so it kind of, it really shifted and revolutionized the way of getting color um, and some different artistic effects within um, printmaking and prints. So moving on, Stanley William Hayter um, was described as being the happiest when he painted. Um, and his art, like most artists, evolved and shifted and changed over time. Um, and he went from creating in very linear, structured ways um, to really open and free, and then kind of reverted back to a more structured, almost optical-like art um, late in his career. And one description that I found says, he transitioned to more tightly controlled linear work, achieving almost optical effects emanating from the vibrations of his weaving lines as they wander through an infinite space in never-ending transformations. And so like I said, in his he shifted and kind of reverted back and forth a little. Another um, described his art as being intense, rich, harmonious color, carefully structured, but characterized by an explosive, joyous freedom. So wondering between those two descriptions, um, kind of just your initial thoughts and opinions as you look at the two artworks in front of you. And the one on the left is a print from our collection here at the museum and the other is a painting. 
And I'd just like you to do a quick compare and contrast. What is the same? What is different? And notice the time frame on these. These were created um, within the same decade, only a couple of years apart in the 1950s. And so do you think that this was a time period of more structure and line? Or do you think this was a period of more freely open, um, freely open creation? Excuse me. So again, I want you to take a look at two works um, by Hayter. And again, the print on the left is from our collection. And the one on the right is a painting. And again, done in the same time period in the 1970s. And wondering um, your opinion on the two of these. More linear, more open and free. Um, and wondering if you personally have a preference on which ones you like more, the two on this slide um, or the two on the previous slide. I've also added a website that I found to be very interesting as I was researching um, that break down his art into the different decades that he was creating. And so really seeing a progression of his work. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out. We now will come back to the original print I showed you called Night Moth from our collection. And um, I would like to leave you with a quote from Hayter. And this is his thinking and philosophy around art. He said, my approach to art is fundamentally experimental. I consider that art, painting, printmaking, sculpture, etc., is a means of research or a pursuit of knowledge rather than a method of producing objects for pleasure, decoration, or entertainment. Together with disciplines such as physics or mathematics, as with music or poetry, art is an attempt to extend and deepen our knowledge of life and our relations with our world. Furthermore, it is a way of seeking means of transmitting and sharing such experience with others. So I am curious how your own philosophies around art compare to his. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we'll hope, we hope you join us next time.